Guys, when you're building a website, whether it's for yourself or your business or a brand, one of the hardest things to do is actually find a domain name that is short and relevant and available. Thanks to .tech domains, finding the, the perfect domain is actually much easier. Programmers, tech startups, and brands finally have a domain of their own. This is why Intel, Viacom, and even the Consumer Electronics Show are now using .techs for their domain. So don't wait, there's a Black Friday sale coming up. It's the perfect time to secure your domain at 95% off. You can pre-register before the 23rd of November to get an additional 10% off on top of that. You just have to go to www.go.tech forward slash Chris Hawks. That's go.tech forward slash my name, Chris Hawks. And you can pre-register now. Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, we're talking about the different flavors of JavaScript and where it is in 2019. Basically the status of JavaScript in 2019. So as we go into it, I mean, what is it? It's a, it's a dy dynamically interpreted uh, scripting language, duct typed. Uh, there is a ECMAScript standard, which is actually the, the standard that different browsers are using for their JavaScript engines. And different browsers have their own JavaScript engines for the most part. Uh, and that's why Microsoft products typically lag behind because they just can never keep up. It seems like with the open source community uh, and some of these advanced, you know, there are these changes that are being made to, to our browsers and the JavaScript specification. Um, so the latest version of JavaScript, which is considered to be somewhat stable, is ES6, which is really the ECMAScript 2015 standard, uh, but it goes by the name of ES6. Now, ES6 still isn't widely supported in all the browsers yet, so um, a lot of people are like, you know, they don't understand the fact that, that businesses have to support things like IE11, and IE11 is not going to have uh, the you know, fat arrow functions and things like that that you find in ES6 that Chrome and Mozilla now support. So you can see here, this is the arrow functions. And if we scroll down to the bottom of this um, MSDN website, which is really one of the best websites to go for any sort of uh, JavaScript information, you can see on here that there is no support for any sort of Internet Explorer. So, uh, you know, there, there is still this need to have JavaScript that works on older browsers. So even though the young developers, they all know the, the fat arrow functions and, and, and they're very familiar with the syntax and the spread operators and things like that, well, it's still not widely supported, so we have to use tools like Babel and Webpack. Babel being the actual compiler that takes modern JavaScript and turns it to an older version of JavaScript that works. And then Webpack, which allows us to actually import external JavaScript files that our code needs and we can do it on demand and it has built-in tree shaking. So Webpack is smart enough to know that like if you're trying to require a certain piece of code that's not being used, it's not gonna bring it into your overall bundled file. Um, so the ability of, of being able to use modules and JavaScript is still not something that is, uh, that, that's you know, supported at all really in the browser and that's why we need to have Webpack which is actually dealing with all these, uh, these imports for us. And then in addition, you set up Webpack to use Babel to, to not only take the imports and the code and also turn it to uh, an older version of the code like you saw with that Babel example that I just had up. So now so, some of the reasons why JavaScript gets a bad rap is because it is considered to be a slow, weakly typed, dynamically, dynamically interpreted language with no type safety. And, uh, and, and there's a lot of bad rap that JavaScript gets for that. Uh, weakly typed meaning that you could take a string and an end it, it would, it would actually just cast one to the other without much uh, argument or any argument. So what is the community's approach to fixing this lack of uh, static typing within JavaScript? And the solution has been to start going over to ty TypeScript. Uh, Microsoft created TypeScript. This is actually by the founder, the main founder of the C Sharp programming language. Um, but TypeScript is aiming to, uh, to, to bring static type checking into JavaScript. Some people love it. Some people hate it. The syntax itself is, is uh, sl you know, slightly different from JavaScript, but it does actually compile down to regular JavaScript. Uh, there's all kinds of different examples here, but let me just show you some of the code. Um, just you can see inside the uh, the code itself here. The you know this is where the actual types is is a type of prop, and then it's defining the actual prop here. And the prop has a name, which is a string, uh, and then also this uh, optional this nullable value uh, that could be a number. But you don't have to actually use TypeScript if you want static checking on your JavaScript ES6. Flow is actually the most popular project that really is just tacked on. Uh, to the JavaScript language, but it's going to watch the code as you're writing it, uh, and it's going to notify you of different problems and things like that so that you can get type safety uh, in your code as you write it. Now, the benefit of Flow is that if you're looking at something like ES6 with Flow using Babel and Webpack um, or versus something like TypeScript, well, Flow is really 
I'm going to be a little bit closer to the actual JavaScript syntax. TypeScript is not exactly JavaScript, but ES6 is the latest standard of JavaScript. Uh, so when you're writing ES6, you're actually writing JavaScript code, whereas if you're writing TypeScript, you're writing TypeScript code that's being then turned to JavaScript. Uh, and I suppose you could make the same argument with ES6, but really what ES6 is doing is it's taking futuristic parts of JavaScript code that are not fully working in browsers uh, and then turning it into an older uh, version of code. But eventually that code that you're writing uh, is going to be the way that you write JavaScript all the time. Um, two other lesser known options of uh, being able to avoid JavaScript is writing with Elm. So this is a fully functional language. Uh, if you guys are interested, it's created by some, uh, some Harvard graduate. I think it was his like, PhD work. And then uh, the other alternative is ClojureScript. And then finally, the new hotness is going to be Reason ML, which is this new project from Facebook, which is going to be a new version, a new way of writing uh, JavaScript with static types as well. And they try to say that this is types without hassle, but uh, this is still in its infancy. It's not widely supported or even finished yet, but uh, we will see some, uh, I think we'll see some major traction with this project in the future. With the advance, advancements that we've seen with the JavaScript syntax, we've also seen advancements in the client-side frameworks that are being built with JavaScript. Things like React and Vue and Angular. Also, because of the popularity and the ease of use with JavaScript and uh, it being a very familiar language that all web developers have to write anyway, uh, that was the language that was chosen to be the actual syntax language for Node.js, the technology library. Um, and Node.js is written itself in C and C++, but you're writing um, the actual code in JavaScript or using the JavaScript syntax, um, using the Chrome V8 engine um, that is built in, into the web browser. So according to GitHub, JavaScript is the number one language when it comes to open source communities. So the, the, the actual amount of projects and everything out there, there's probably more JavaScript developers now in the world than probably any other programming language, I would guess. So for that reason, there's obviously a lot of demand, uh, a lot of competition, but it's, it's a great first language to learn if you're trying to debate whether or not to learn that because if you're going to do any sort of web development, I would definitely recommend it probably as the first language. Um, and if you're just looking at general overall programming, I would probably still say Python. Also, if you guys are interested in tapping into JavaScript with Node.js, um, building static websites using something like Gatsby.js, uh, React, and uh, GraphQL, then I would re recommend my course on Udemy. I also have a bunch of other free courses that I've made available, some of my older stuff that I just didn't feel comfortable charging for, so I made all that free. Um, and uh, just make sure you guys check that out as well. Thank you.